On June 7, 1998, the story of James Byrd Jr. made national headlines. A case of a black man accepting a ride from three white men who would nearly immediately beat him, chain him to the back of their truck, and drag him until his death. This is the story of James Byrd Jr. Born on May 2nd, 1949, James Byrd Jr. was the third of eight children. His parents, Stella and James Byrd Sr., raised their family in an East Texas community named Jasper. And as is common with East Texas families, their lives revolved around church. While Byrd's mother served as a Sunday school teacher, his father was a deacon at the Greater New Bethel Baptist Church. A young James also contributed by singing and playing the piano. And in 1967, Byrd graduated from Jasper Row High School as a member of the last segregated class in its history. Despite an excellent academic record, Bird did not follow the path of his two sisters and strayed away from going to college. Instead, he married a few years out of high school and fathered three children, Jamie, Renee, and Ross. Bird sporadically worked as a vacuum salesman, but he struggled with alcoholism and he ended up spending a few years in prison for petty theft. By 1993, Bird and his wife had divorced and by 1996, he had relocated back to Jasper and set out to improve his life by going to Alcoholics Anonymous. Friends and family would describe Bird as a friendly father and grandfather. He was charismatic. He was musically talented. This is how James Bird Jr.'s family remembers him, full of joy in singing. Overall, generally well-liked. Things were looking up for Bird until the early morning of June 7th, 1998. In June of 1998, Bird, a 49-year-old black man, was beaten by three white men, chained to a pickup, and then dragged to death near Jasper, Texas. On that morning, he was leaving his parents' house when he ended up accepting a ride from three men, Sean Allen Berry, Lawrence Russell Brewer, and John William King. Instead of driving him home, the trio drove the 49-year-old man out to a desolated area. They proceeded to mercilessly beat him, spray paint his face, urinate and defecate on him, and then they chained him by the ankles to their truck before dragging him for about three miles. King and two other white men are accused of kidnapping James Byrd Jr. and dragging him three miles to his death behind their pickup truck last June. Today, an FBI expert testified that tires on that truck match tire track impressions near Byrd's dismembered body. Just think when you say it's a chain and when you look at it and visualize that being tied around ankles, I, I, I think it has an impact. Throughout all of the pain and terror, Byrd fought for his life. In fact, he managed to stay conscious the entire time that he was being dragged behind the truck until the truck took a slight turn at a high rate of speed, sending Bird into a concrete culvert. The devastating impact severed his right arm, shoulder, and head. A pathologist testified Bird was alive for much of it, dying about halfway through after being decapitated and having his right arm ripped off. Brewer later claimed that Bird's throat had been slashed by Barry before he had been dragged. However, forensic evidence suggests that Bird had been trying to keep his head up the entire time that he was being dragged. And an autopsy proved that he was alive during much of the dragging. Barry, Brewer, and King would dump the mutilated remains of Bird in front of an African-American church on Huff Creek Road. It was here on the old country Huff Creek Road, his body dismembered and dumped in front of a black church. And afterwards, they went to a barbecue. A passing motorist would discover Bird's remains the following morning. Along the area where Bird was dragged, police found a wrench with the name Barry written on it. They also found a lighter with the word possum inscribed into it, which was King's prison nickname. But most unsettling of all, police found 81 locations where portions of Bird's remains were found on the road. Since Brewer and King were well-known white supremacists, it was determined by state law enforcement officials that this was actually a hate crime. 
They would call upon the FBI less than 24 hours after the discovery of Bird's remains. There was even more testimony about that pickup truck. FBI agents said they searched it high and low, found flesh and blood samples on the bottom of the truck and on the tailpipe, presumably from Bird's body. The case against Barry Brewer and King, aside from the mountain of evidence, was further bolstered by confessions both before and after conviction. King expressed pride in the crime. He said that during the murder, he realized that he himself might have to die. And in one jailhouse letter, he would write, quote, Regardless of the outcome of this, we have made history. Death before dishonor. End quote. I presented evidence that Bill King was an angry young man with white supremacist views who was in that pickup truck the night that James Byrd Jr. was dragged to his death. Defense lawyers have not said whether they will call King to testify in his own behalf. Brewer would say in a televised interview, quote, As far as any regrets? No. I have no regrets. No. I'd do it all over again, to tell you the truth. End quote. All three were convicted of capital murder. Law enforcement officers quickly arrested Lawrence Russell Brewer, John William King, and Sean Allen Berry. All three were convicted of capital murder. Berry got a life sentence. King and Brewer received a death penalty for the hate crime that made headlines across the nation and the world. Lawrence Brewer was sentenced to death and was executed at the Huntsville unit on September 21st, 2011. John King was sentenced to death and was executed at the Huntsville unit on April 24th, 2019. Sean Barry was sentenced to life in prison. James Byrd Jr.'s life was taken away from him in the most cruel and inhumane way possible. With all of the darkness and despair, there's solace to be found in the fact that James didn't die in vain. Following his death, Byrd's family would go on to found the James Byrd Foundation for Racial Healing, an organization which conducts diversity workshops, offers scholarships to people of color, and runs an oral history project with more than 2,600 personal stories about racism. On May 11, 2001, Texas Governor Rick Perry would sign the James Byrd Hate Crimes Act into law. This act would strengthen penalties for crimes motivated by a victim's sex, color, gender, race, religion, disability, sexual preference, age, or national origin in the state of Texas. On October 22, 2009, President Barack Obama would sign the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crime Prevention Act, which would expand on the original 1969 United States hate crime law to include crimes motivated by a victim's perceived or actual gender identity, sexual orientation, gender, or disability. Jamie Byrd, James's youngest daughter, would morph her anger and pain into purpose and she now serves on the Houston Police Force for over 10 years. The murder of James Byrd Jr. was over 20 years ago, but the aftershock of one of the most abhorrent crimes in U.S. history continues to be felt to this day. While some positive changes came about in response to his murder, it doesn't change the fact that James Byrd Jr. was an innocent man. The only thing he was guilty of was being born black, and three white supremacists summarily executed him for that. James Byrd Jr. was a person that was loved and cherished. James Byrd Jr. was a person, and he didn't deserve to die that way. And really, no one does. Knowing that just 20 years ago, something like this could happen in my home state, and somehow, some way, people thought that this was an okay thing to do, it deeply upsets me. Our society is going through a lot of changes right now, and I think it would be a disservice to all of us to forget about what happened to James Byrd Jr. While our friends and family and neighbors are out there marching in the street for equality and fighting against police brutality, it's important to remember how demonic somebody can be without a badge on their chest. At the time of this recording, James Byrd Jr.'s murder was about 22 years ago. In 1969, the United States passed the Hate Crime Act. 22 years from then, was 1991, the year that Rodney King was beat down in the streets. Inequality still exists. Racism still exists. Don't forget about what happened to James Byrd Jr. Thank you for watching.